that, that mark of each species changes as the trees get older. So you can have a young birch, black birch, say, and you can know exactly what it looks like. But in a certain period of time, the bark could ch changes completely. And say when it's 100 years old, it looks nothing like what it looked like when it was younger. So, so there's a lot of, and for me, when I was first working on the book, I knew that bark changes as, as trees mature, but I really had no idea how much that happened. But what happens, um, and it's, it's detailed in the book also, is that species are in the key, the identification key, multiple times because of the fact that you have these different characteristics. Sometimes that doesn't even have to do with age, it just has to do with that there's a lot of diversity in, in a certain species. So I wanted to start um, by just thinking about how bark grows. Not so that we're botanists and that we know all the, the technical terms, but the, the perspective of actually differentiating between one trunk and the other has a lot to do with with how they grow, and, and that was what I finally fell into as far as trying to come up with this language to write a, an identification key and, and, and differentiate between one and the other. So all trees at some point start out with this outer bark that's smooth and unbroken, if you just look at eye level at this, at this tree here. <laughs> and what we're looking at, well let's start from the inside. Okay, so imagine that we have a cross section of this tree. On the inside we have wood. Exterior to the wood is, is bark, and bark consists of multiple layers. In between those two layers is the vascular cambium, and that is an area of cell division. That's where almost all of the growth in the diameter and the girth of the tree happens. Wood cells are produced to the inside, bark to the outside. So immediately outside the bark, is an area outside the wood is an area of living bark tissue, the inner bark, uh, which is mainly uh, used for transportation. It's the phloem tissue. So it's transporting all the products of photosynthesis throughout the tree. Now, exterior to that, if you think of this smooth bark tree here, there are three additional layers. That collectively, they're called, they're called the periderm. Out on the outside layer, what we're looking at are cork cells, which die soon after they mature, and that's the protective outer layer. So on this tree over here, on any, what we're looking at are dead tissue cork cells. It's a very thin layer. And what happens with most of the species in this region is that the bark doesn't stay smooth. You can see at the base of this tree it's starting to break apart. If you start to look around, you see as especially on the larger trees, the bark is starting to break apart and develop multiple layers. Some species, a few species in this region, maintain relatively thin bark. One is American beech, which is the tree that everyone likes to carve their initials in because that bark remains smooth and it doesn't break apart. So if you carve them now, 50 years from now, they're liable to still be there and, and readable. Paper birch is, is another species where that happens. And one of the questions, we can start to talk about ecology a little bit and what happens is, why would some species maintain thin bark, whereas the other species develop this thick multi-layered bark which is more protective over time? <clears throat> so here we have this, this paper birch and uh, I always welcome trees that have really readily identifiable characteristics. So when you're writing a key and you can say white, you can take almost all the other species right off the table. So it's a nice place to start. Um, what else do you notice about this particular bark? Is that it's peeling. So this outer protective cork layer is still intact, but just these thin, wispy outer layers start to peel away from the trunk. What else, anything else? These lines. Are you talking about the, hor the horizontal lines? Does anybody know those words? Lenticels. Um, functionally, they can be really, really important. You notice in a different sense, sometimes with just little specks or little dots or dashes, if you look at young twigs, they almost always have very visible lenticels. <clears throat> Part of those three outer layers of this periderm the innermost layer is very thin, it's called the cork skin, but it contains chlorophyll and it has the capacity for photosynthesis. So 
especially, mostly in the youngest twigs where the outer bark is very thin, some sunlight actually penetrates through this protective outer layer, reaches that, that chlorophyll containing layer, and can have energy production. It's minimal, but it's supplemental. It can have a lot of benefit to the trees, especially a species like paper birch, which grows as one of the most northerly cited hardwood species in North America. So way up in, in northern Canada, and up, up in those areas in the tundra, you'll find paper birch. One of the thoughts behind that is the fact that this lower bark here remains thin enough that some sunlight can penetrate through. So instead of on most species where the bark gets very thick and the only type of bark photosynthesis that's going to happen is way up at the tips of the twigs, this has a lot greater capacity for that energy, supplemental energy production. So growing places where there's a very short growing season and there's very harsh conditions, that can, that can have a lot of benefit. So one of the reasons for having that thinner bark is that bark photosynthesis. Now paper birch grow in a lot of different places, but that's their competitive niche where a lot of other species just can't compete. So it's one of those places. The lenticels actually allow gas exchange. And without gas exchange, you can't have energy production or photosynthesis. And then talk about what this peeling is all about. I mean, it looks nice and it makes it easy to identify. But what it does also, you can notice the places that have peeled are a lot whiter in color than everywhere else. Because one of the things that's a nemesis to any of this bark photosynthesis is something growing on the trunk. Algae, lichens, mosses, and things of that nature. It, it, it clogs these lenticels and it, and it blocks sunlight for that bark photosynthesis. So there's a whole pot of, of ecology that you can talk about just when you're talking about this one, this one species. <laughs>